Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're here at Old Berry Hill Lake in Surrey. Beautiful lake, beautiful setting, lovely autumnal day. And we're going to be doing some predator fishing. We're going to be looking for Xander. We've had one go for Xander here. And we caught some fish. And of course that got the old grey matter ticking. And it got us thinking about different methods of catching these Xander. I mean, last trip we had here, I was uh, lucky enough really to get a £5.10 uh, ounce, I think, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. £5.10, ounce, which, which for me, just to catch one alone was, was something, but I've, I've heard here that's quite a good size and they do grow up to pretty big here. But um, we were using a sort of single hook method really, mm. with uh, just a head, roach head, hooked through the lip, and they almost take it on the drop. Sometimes we had this feeding frenzy, just as it got dusk, absolutely kicked off and it was really good, so it's got us come back for more. And it's got a couple of ideas we want to show you. I'm going to run them past you experts out there. Maybe you obviously might all know about it. If you know about it, forgive us, but we don't know about it. We're going to give it a shot and see if we can actually catch one to camera for you. Fingers crossed we'll do something for you tonight. Come and have a look what our ideas are. Well, last time we came here, we weren't really using conventional uh, Xander gear. We were using our, p our pike rods. I had my stiff lure rod, actually, was one of them, with braid on it, which he loves. Horrible <laughs> stuff. And... Uh, we use your pike rods as well, but there is, they're a bit stiff to be honest. Although we handled the fish perfectly, um, they were quite stiff. So we've got something different now, haven't we, Dad? Yeah. Um, our local resident bailiff, Mike, told us to try some barbel rods. He obviously is a barbel fisherman, and he said that'd be a good idea. Perfectly adequate for the fish. That's what we're using a standard Avon rods, just a regular ancient fixed ball wheel there. And you can use 12, 15 pound line. That's all you need there. And obviously on the end, we use, well, you can, you can see here, I don't know if you'll see that there. I just got a trace with a swan shot there. It's from you, the tackle shot, that one, actually. This is the yeah. tackle shot one you can get from Old Berry Hill. They supply these in there. You can go and buy these already made up. We just wait for this, guys. No treble hooks, they are banned. Rightly single. so. I rarely use a treble hook when I think about it mm. now. Just a straight single hook there on a wire trace. And going to be using chunk baits, but we're going to be using chunk baits with a difference. Yeah, so I thought. I've, I've, to be honest, I've heard of it out there, but I thought we'd give it a go. I know it's big in the cart world. We've got a PVA. Um, now, we're not using like a solid PVA bag. What this is, is just mesh. And they use it a lot for things like um, the boilies. River fishermen, fishermen use them, putting their boilies in for barbel. Uh, but they're also good for maggots as well, fishing maggots, ball of maggots near your hook bait. So we've come up with the idea of fishing, using the roach heads as the hook bait, chopping up other chunks of roach and also our favorite sprats over here and putting them in a ball of PVA bag and just hooking our hook bait and the hook through that PVA bag on the edge just so that we've got a tucked up piece of bait right by our hooks because I reckon these Xander are going to scoff it, aren't they? Well, once it gets dark, they say it can be really good here. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I've been doing quite a lot of predator fishing. That's the first time I've Xander fished and I was surprised. It absolutely, it was like throwing a switch, wasn't it? Uh, it, just... it was a short feeding spell, but it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy. But we got a little bit of addition to go to that we're going to experiment. This is an experimental Xander fishing trip. I'm going to be sticking on my bait. Some of that stuff. I don't know whether you know oh, what that is. That's the famous, that world famous raptor oil sticks. that you can't buy anywhere. Homemade it's in your shed. It is bad, badass stuff. I'm telling you. Should be illegal that stuff. Obviously, with sprats, they got a bit of oil in them. But when we got the takes, although Mike had one in the daytime on a sprat, didn't get takes on the sprat at yeah. night. It was the, ro the roach head did definitely did the trip on the on the, as a hook bait. Yeah, I got more but more takes on the roach than I did. I guess that's because that's their natural food in there. And small section. Now the other guy. Yeah, look, this is what we're thinking about, guys. Is twofold really. Are these Xander just coming in under a natural state of darkness being nocturnal feeders? Or are they coming in because, let's say, let's say a couple of hours before it gets dark, the regular pleasure anglers are throwing all their ground bait in, knocking out all their, all their, Small all their bream and stuff like that, ground yeah. bait, maggots, worms, whatever they've got. Now listen, if you want to know about margin fish, I'm talking real margin fishing here, look at this link here, okay? There's the link for carp in the margins. You will not see any film getting them closer to this in the margin, I don't think. But I'm wondering, do all those small fry come in sort of that sort of time before dusk and that draws the Xander in as well? So we don't know. Water temperature is definitely dropping so it'll be a slow breakdown. But a lot of people think, oh, when, when you put um, chunks of meat and stuff like that in, the water from the fish breaks it down too fast and you'll never get out quick enough. But that's why we've got things like this that's really oily and the fish we're using is oily anyway so it shouldn't break the PVA bag down too quickly. See the other, the other thing I, was, I noticed and even when the guys were here doing it I guess they're the local experts they were throwing out every time they hooked a Xander 
they threw out some straight chunks away, straight yeah. away. But before it got dark, the seagulls ate most of it. I noted that. So that's what got me to thinking about this. How can we get those chunks of bait down quickly quickly, so that the Xander can see them, poke around and pick a few up, and hopefully get one of our hook baits? We're going to give it a try. We'll show you them before we cast out. And trust me, the sprat with the raptor on it is going to be cast out really quickly. I do not want it splashing anywhere. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to be doing is just using that single hook and these very small roach like this. You can see that one. I'm just going to hook it through the bottom jaw, out the top of the head, trying to get it through the skull. And then, I'm quite sure they'd eat that, but all the locals and the bailiffs tell me, cut it in half about there. And you've got all the juices flying You've got the juices bit, coming out of that. Don't throw your tail away, by the way, we'll be using that. Keep that for the next PVA bag. <laughs> and then, then sorry, right. then that's our hook bait. And then what we're going to do is we've chopped up our trusty sprats here. We've chopped them up and put them in the PVA tube. I'm just going to tie that off there, hook it through the back end there. All ready to cast out. Get that out as quick as possible. I've got one rod out. Now I'm going to get the second rod out, chopped up my meat in the PVA tube. Now while I might cast that out, the other thing you could do, if you have, say, frozen sprouts, these are fresh, they're not too bad. If you have frozen sprouts, you're going to have moisture and a lot more water in them when you thaw them out. It might be an idea to either roll them in flour or even in salt to try and make them a little bit drier, and that will slow them out when they're, you know, when they're dissolving. They don't come out so quite so quickly, they don't dissolve so quick. So the wetter it is, the faster it's going to dissolve, so you can, you know, if you're using frozen bait remember there's a lot of moisture in there you roll them in flour that's another tip you could do Okay, so I've got my small half bait there. You can see it, I'm just gonna dip it in that, in that wrapped oil. And just let it drip inside the jar so I don't wanna spill it everywhere. And then cast it straight out. With the baits cast out, it was just a question of waiting for that light level to fall low enough to bring those Xander on the feed. But just look at the oil that drips off my Raptor oil. It is monumental. It sends a slick out that would attract a shark from miles away. So my theory was that oil should attract any predators like Xander. Who's to know? You can do nothing but experiment. If you don't experiment, you're never going to know, are you? So when Mike uses the traditional bobbins, I just use these lightweight ones, and they get up to an odd pair of bite alarms. Both different sizes, you'll notice. That's because I got hold of them individually, but I can also watch the line enter in the water twitch to see if I get a run first. Okay guys, now these are the bobbins I'm going to be using. They told us that they can be really finicky, these are, and they can be very touchy, that's why we're on small baits. But I'm just using a little plastic, it's a spine, I expect you've seen it in our other cart films. Very, very light, but to actually take a bit more tension on it, I've put on there a BB shot. Don't crunch your teeth on it, and, you know, squeeze it on there, it's a visit to the dentist. Of course we all do that. Why not use a pair of forceps to just pinch that shot on there? And listen, if it's really windy, you can actually use a heavier shot and all you do to put it on the line, open it up, pop it over the line, hangs there, slides up and down, no problems. But when you hook a fish, hook the fish first, and while it's under tension, 
put your fingers in there, just open it out, spring it off, put it in your pocket. For the setup on my own rods, I had exactly, or pretty much the same as Mike, didn't have pipe rods, a pair of Avon barbel rods, that's all we had, and on those I had a pair of fixed rule spool bait runners, but I had those line clips now, I guess you can still buy those, that can be popped out. So the line's clipped up there, and I can leave the bail arm open. So should I get a take, it pops free, there's no pressure there, and I don't even use the bait runner. Coupled to those ultra lightweight bobbins there, and I've got a little shot pinched on them. Hopefully, hopefully the predators, when they pick the baits up, don't feel anything. All I wait is for that light to come on. <laughs> now, if you have ordinary wheels and don't have a bait run, you can still back that drag on the front of the reel so that the line can be pulled off so if you don't want to use a, a like what we call run clips you can use a light drag setting on the reel and here are some of the boat guys coming back as the light level falls they're paddling back they've been out fishing in the boats all day you don't have to have a boat and to be honest for the sand i think maybe the evening fishing's got to be best from the bank and as they came back you can see the light level is stopping it's really starting to drop now there's nothing to stop us getting a fish. Now guys, with sander fishing, indeed any fishing, you know, if you do night barbel fishing, years ago we just had a little hand torch, held it in our teeth. Nowadays, wow, rock on, it's all mod cons. You can get these little lamps, little headlights, that are really cheap actually, you know, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Rechargeable batteries or ordinary batteries, you're gonna need them at some stage. Obviously, some anglers don't like to use them, they find they think it's fine as a fish, but you know, we're at a commercial fishery. Obviously, they come on like this, so you can have an adjustment up and down. That's fine for what you're looking at, but you can also put the red across there, like they do in the army, army style, and you can tilt it down, and you've got enough light there just to bait up and cast out, so that's all you need. And then most of the time, you're going to leave it on red, and you don't have to flash it all over the water. Just a little tip for you. You on there, mate? Yeah, first fish. Oh, look at that. We're better on these rods, definitely. Definitely better on these rods. I've got the reel on back one now, put it on the drag. There we go. And shows that Santa. PVA, uh, yeah. So PVA works. Shows the PVA works. And this is obviously feeding time. We're at 5.30. And I know it's a short feeding spell, so we'll, we'll get this one in on and get the bait out as soon as possible. Oh, look at him go on that rod. Not that you can see it in the dark. I can see it, guys. Don't yeah. worry. It's been... And after netting this sander, it wasn't too long before Mike had his bait back in the water and what? He was hooked up again! It's a better one. A lot of energy in it. I think this is, yeah, this I is, think this is a nice. It could be. I, I think we might be being close to PB there. The PB's got a belly on it. Ooh, yeah, but we're going to weigh six. that one, I think. Could go six. Nice fish, though. And I think the hook's come out. Yeah, so it's not. Just there, got the four sets. What sort of bite huh? Really finicky. Really small bite, nothing uh nothing blatant and obvious like you'd expect. But thankfully with a, a single hook, if I can get that there's the there we go, let's just fell, fell out. out, absolutely fell out. There we go. Let's get him out of the mat. One last look at him. Beautiful fish. Let him recover a bit, he might want to shoot off, but his gills are going, so. Camouflage in the water, too. Off he goes. Go on, I can see his eye in the water there. Another one? Yeah. Another fish, as you can see, we've been next to the tripod still in the swim. It's still, we haven't got rigged up again yet. Do you know what, guys? This could be PB, Bill. You're around the other road. Yeah. Let's check out him on the mat. Oh, that's a nice fish, watch out. How much you go, mate? Oh. 
Seven pounds seven. Seven seven, that will do nice. That's a PB. Let's have a look at the belly on that one. Whatever well, we go. Seven pound seven ounces of totally awesome predator. That is a nice one. That and you awesome. can, as you say, see the fangs on that one. Yeah, look at it. What a fish. Good belly on that. That's been feeding on those PVA bags we've been there. That's got half a pound of sprats in his stomach. Yeah. What a fish. Beauty. We'll get it back. Still. Get the rod straight still out. Still for that. And then uh, on to the next one. Can you believe it? Mike is on again. What is what is happening with your swim tonight? Oh, it's a nice fish, is it? Is it a pike? It's no, it's a big zander, big zander, big zander. Get that. That is a big as could be another PB. You can't get two B two PBs. I can't even it's speak. A BB PB. I can't even speak properly. This is big. It's the rod's holding. Well, it's the, it's the oh, old barbel rod. Just take your time. Oh, it's a nice oh, fish. This is a PB. Take your time with it. This is a big fish. Here he is, folks. Look at the head on him. No, Shaking his head. He's coming. He's coming. Look at that gold of his eye. Oh, is it red? I don't even know what colour it is. No, he's about eight. Oh, that could be a PB. I think it could be a PB. He's getting weighed. Put it that way. Yeah. Look at the it eye. Could be a PB. Look at the eye on that fish. Let's get him out. He's had. Oh, I can see some scratches on him. He's had been in the wars, but. Well, maybe got his hands after him. God, let's get this weighed. Could you hear me? Oh, hey, I know. I'm on fire. <laughs> I was just saying we've had the, the, the predator grand slam. You have. I've had a pike today, I've had loads of perch, and now I've had a zander. Yeah. PB zander. Let's go and take him on the mat. No, that's, 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 that's heavier. Not. That's heavier. Yeah, that's a, that's a longer fish as well. That's a nice fish. Longer. Definitely longer. I just see it just on the corner. There we go. Breaks out. Let's have a look. I'm going to weigh this actually. That's. That's way worthy. Can't see him there. Let me come round. A bit of light. It's at over eight, I'm sure. Eight three. <laughs> Never PB. Eight down three. Look at that. He's definitely been in the wars. You can see by the scratches. But that is one totally awesome big Xander. That's that's definitely got some weight to it. Right, we'll get this slip this one back and I'm getting that bait straight out there. Could be late for the girlfriend tonight. Yeah, we'll be.